Thank you. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Um, it's very interesting is that, uh, oh, I get the wrong one. All right. So it, it is that um, we have already drew so many uh, experts around giant um, just before me. And that, uh, um, like uh, uh, Lou uh, said yesterday, um, still a lot of people thinking that uh, the way to control our obesity is through that hypothalamus. Uh, but um, I think more and more people are in that um, speakers already uh, mentioned that it's very important function for hypothalamic area is actually for nutritional needs. And the more and more people, uh, including myself, uh, funding in that uh, reward area is also very, very important, and they interact each other, and they, um, they just um, react to all the emotional factors or uh, intrinsic or extrinsic factor, uh, all its cues. So for so many years, um, as uh, Peter just uh, mentioned about that um, the area of uh, ventral striatum um, area and uh, all this uh, limbic system, they do have the um, function related to the food eating and also the, the, um, the drugs such as amphetamine is very, very powerful. It's so high that uh, it can <clears throat> change the dopamine system up to the almost even times. So that's why people, they like drug instead of uh, people thinking. Uh, I remember way back that uh, I was studying <clears throat> in my career that uh, usually people use animal eating food as a control. So while that, uh, um, they say that, well, you know, it's, it's nothing, uh, it's not as powerful as that, um, uh, the drug, why eating can be uh, addictive. So for many years, uh, we used that um, uh, imaging method called post-strong emission tomography. That is by given uh, um, particles that such as uh, sugar that uh, you can inject into the body and then monitor the function of the brain. Uh, this being right now people talking about PET, is talking about imaging for the cancer. Yes, because uh, cancer uh, also use that uh, glucose as an energy source. That's why you see that. But the brain uh, a neuron use a glucose. That's how we use that to detect the, how the brain function. So in our laboratory, also develop many uh, tracer. Uh, so the tracer I use for these, uh, Peter just mentioned to you that we use uh, several of them. One of them is to, to detect the dopamine D2 receptors. The one I just mentioned to you uh, about the glucose metabolic activity using that uh, really active sugar. So um, it's, it's many years uh, when I started my career was interested in uh, the drug of abuse. So I started with uh, Dr. Norovokov, initial to study cocaine. Then uh, we start to uh, study alcohol, alcoholic. Then I had a project to study heroin abuser. Uh, Lately, in that, uh, uh, 2000, we start to study the methamphetamine abuser. It's very, very interesting. If you see all this, if I covered it, this all compare the drug abuse population to their age match control because each um, substance abuser, they are in different age group or they are different um, uh, uh, race and ethnic background. So. You can see that if I don't tell you which one, I even for myself, because I, I, I make all these slides myself, so I know who they are, but I show it to you instead of what is that? It looks the same. Yes, they looks the same, because they all shown that the drug abuser in this line, they have um, lower dopamine D2 receptor compared to their controls. So basically, it's uh, this group of the subjects they have to use something to, in order to make them like a normal. So that it's not necessary that, that oh, they like it. No, to the end, they need it in order to make them into our steady state. We see the sunshine, we look good, but for them, it's not sufficient. They need the drug. And so you can see that in a cigarette smoker, usually you see in the, all the buildings outside, a lot of people, they go there, they pop. Because in the past, they can, they can do it in the building. Right now, it's like, no, you have to go outside. Why? Because in some period of time, they need to go out to have a supply. 
because they need this, the supply of the substance in order to make them dopamine into the steady state. So in the late 90s, uh, we, as I mentioned to you, we, we went, witnessed all these things. I, I tried to see something, maybe, because this seems like related to the behavior, and something that may be interesting. The first one, because I'm a joker, so I said, maybe I do exercise. I did it. Well, the, thing, the result seems not so interesting. Then I have to into a study of the obesity because at the time it's booming of the obese person around um, in uh, the community. So I said, well, let's bring them in. So I have to, to bring them in. The problem is after two subjects, my technician said, no, we cannot run study anymore. I said, why? Because our imaging bed broken. I said, wow, that's very bad because that, uh, the subject I'm bringing is more than 300 pounds. And so that, I had to wait for almost five years to finish that project because it's difficult to get the subject because all these subjects are very shy and turn out they looks exactly like drug abuser. If you, uh, if I show this picture, you say, well, what is that? Again, they are Athletic subjects, actually, they are obese persons. So this group of people, they have body mass index more than 40, in average of 51. That means that uh, some of my subjects is almost 500 pounds. Uh, I don't have anything, anybody below BMI 40, and compared to at the time, what I'm thinking is normal is below 30. So for me, I'm considered normal, but actually, I'm not. Um, so basically, it's very interesting is that uh, all this group of subjects you will see the normal, they have no correlation of their uh, dopamine D2 receptor related to the body mass index. But, very interesting, in the obese group, this group, has, if they have higher body mass index, they have less dopamine D2 receptor. So that means that there is a such correlation related to this the dopamine system uh, deficiency and the body mass index. So, this kind of the, uh, study has been replicated by other group, and, uh, but I was thinking to say that maybe I had to do the people with bariatric surgery because they're very efficient, lost body weight, but I did not get the fund. But other, other uh, institutes, they also try to get the funding. Obviously, none of them success yet. But uh, uh, there are two different uh, results came out. One is a Hopkins group shown that once they have the surgery, then they have increased all the dopamine disease receptor. But the group in the Vandiville, they did not see it. So, turned out very interesting is the timing of running the study make difference because all our study done in Hopkins doing in the uh, in the morning or early uh, late uh, uh, morning. But the Vandiville group, they did the study in the evening because they don't have slot to do the study all done in the evening. So obviously there are differences in terms of uh, circadian rhythm in the dopamine system. That would be very interesting for us to understand why drug abuser and obese person, they like to use their substance in the evening. So another study we, want to, we, we did was using ready up to sugar. So we try to see what happened to all this group of people uh, with the body mix from uh, 19 to 37. So we give everybody have the uh, basic um, uh, radioactive glucose scan to see their brain function. And then we find that it's very interesting is the higher uh, your body mix index, you have lower metabolic activity, means your brain function decrease. Where is that? It's all in the frontal cortex. In the area, if you see that, very interesting area such as, oh, sorry, uh, this orbital frontal cortex. That is related to our decision, how we're going to do things. And the anterior cingular is area we relate to our control. So then we also have all this group of people, they have that, uh, a lot of these uh, neuropsychological testing. Some of them are very interesting. It's the one related to that uh, our test of memory and uh, um, the test related to exactly functions. So what happened is this metabolic activity decrease is related to the decrease of this neuropsychological function. So that means that if the person gradually increase the body weight, they change their brain. So, it's very unfortunately changed the area related to how you make your decisions. So we say that, well, if the person that decreased the body weight, 
they have the change of their dopamine system. Is there any connection between these areas? Because that we know that the, uh, this limbic system, they, they are into the, in the, from the big brain into the striatal area, and eventually also project to the frontal cortex. This is all the limbic area. They connect to each other. So is there any connections? If the person they increase their body weight, would that change their brain function or not? Is there any correlation? Well, very unfortunate, yes, they do have correlation. So the correlation is in the orbital frontal cortex area I mentioned to you, and uh, singular gyrus. Those are related to your inhibition control. So that means that the body weight, you gradually increase, then you lost your judgment, and you cannot control yourself not to eat. So this is a vicious cycle, the vicious cycle. So he said, well, what's, so what's all about? You know, what kind of people are like that? Very unfortunately, those are the drug abuser. That's why drug abusers have the exactly the same situation. You say, don't use it, but I cannot help. I must use it because their brain already ruined. To what extent they lost their exactly the function, they cannot control themselves. So you can imagine that this is a very, very unfortunate uh, visual cycle on this kind of study. So this is like a chronic happening into a person. So you say about that, usually happen is that uh, um, the people they use the drug or the people they, they usually it happen is a cue. Once they have the cue, then they, they cannot control themselves because at the, when a person, the cocaine abuser, once they see the cue, what happened to them? They release the dopamine. So that small amount of dopamine will initiate their desire, their craving to use a drug. So if they go through a street corner where they get the cocaine, they immediately, what they, they told me was, well, my stomach growing, and then that, then they just cannot, it's very difficult for them just pass through the area. So they need to go away from the communities where he, he, uh, he or she get the, the drug. So same thing, this is happened to the obese person. So if the obese person, I did a study showing that the cue is really to release, initiate the, the dopamine. The binge eater, the same thing. So once you have the cue, then you release the dopamine, then you initiate your desire to eat food. So this is a very similar situation. So basically, that, uh, this is a problem. For us, if you are normal, okay, that's fine. We can see the food over there. And then uh, I say, well, I'm giving a talk, and should I go and have orange over there or not? You know, I did not eat too much because I talked too much this morning. I did not complete my, my meal. So I am said I'm still hungry. What should I do? Should I go and grab or not? No, but Mark asked me to give this talk. So, okay, I, I thinking of that. Then I said, well, I control myself. So, okay, I'm very well behaved. So I stop. I don't go there. But if I really need that food very, very much, and then that is, I'm very hungry because it's so delicious over there. I'm keep looking a lot, keep looking a lot, keep looking a lot. And then I say that, well, well, mark is mark, but I'm stomach, I'm very hungry. Then I go and I eat the food. So this is that, uh, um, the way we always say that you, you are driving a car. If you have, okay, and then people ask me, what should I do with my kids? I say, well, you know, people, kids like ADHD, they're always a problem is they, they have a lot of impulse, very similar, the brain, actually, their brain very similar to, uh, they have down regulated dopamine, very similar to drug abuser. So what happened is that they have a lot of impulse. The problem is if they have impulse, then they need to do a big break. They know to, how to control their car by how to help them to find a very good way to control their brain. So if you have a good car and you know how to push your brake nicely, you are a good race, you know, the car racer. But you are not, you're always car accident. So this is a very Im important uh, concept for us to understand the obesity. Thank you very much. <laughs>